Hello hens, happy Halloween. To celebrate Halloween, I decided to do a very special entire history of, which is the entire history of the goth family. I've tended to focus less on families lately, but the goth family is something that I've been dying to do for a very, very long time. So today we're going to do an in-depth coverage of the goth family. It also only covers the main games. Just want to say that this video is actually sponsored by me and my mum and my sister. I have started a new business where I sell prints and stickers and, and sweatshirts and everything that I like. Me, my mum and my sister all package them and send them. It's only UK at the minute but we are working on international shipping hope you have a great halloween let's jump on in So the first mention of the goth family is actually going all the way back to the medieval era. I knew they were old, but Jesus, I didn't know they were in cahoots with Henry VIII. Probably <laughs> wouldn't surprise me though if a goth had the head beheaded. That is a tongue twister, your honor. So the first mention is actually in the Gothique Library, which is a set that you can get on the Sims 3 store. And it actually alludes to Gunther Goth and Gunther Goth's house. Built by the first goths that ever settled in Sunset Valley, this hauntingly majestic library has twists, turns, and surprises around every corner. And within this Gothic library, we also have mention of Lady Raven Dancer goth we have lady raven dancer goth spell boo and this suspicious tome is chock full of discount charms and hexes curse your neighbors enchant your shoes guaranteed to never leave a whisper of glitter this book will strike the ear and mirth into your friends lady raven dancer goth also has a mention in the sims 4 paranormal store which has a crystal ball that's named after her so the law goes back deep and the law is very strong and then we move on to the 19th century which is this victorian times my special address this is where i come to fucking shine in the sims 3 show time we have a prop and it's a stage prop and it's about morgana goth and the story behind Morgana Goth is that she was so beautiful that she actually drove men to insanity. That is the type of goal that I would like to have. Those are some little easter eggs that I found within the game. The writers in The Sims are actually very clever at sprinkling out tiny little bits of lore that you can find within the game. So there's lots of lore easter eggs. And then we move into the actual Sims timeline. So if we go as far back as we can in the family tree, we're going to start off with Victor and Samuel of Goth. These two are brothers. And we're going to start off with Samuel of Goth first because he didn't actually end up having any children. So his line kind of stops there. So we're going to focus on him and then move on to the lineage. Samuel of Goth was actually introduced in the Sims 3 Supernatural, which is one of the most beautiful packs in my opinion. He lives in Moonlight Falls, but is unfortunately dead. Actually, there is a bit of a catch. And his bio reads, Samuel is a goth through and through. Although known as a hard work and ambitious man, and Samuel also has a bit of an insane streak. Most people attribute this streak to his sudden marriage to a woman much younger and poorer than he. Samuel hasn't let his death from his favourite snack slow him down. He died from mysterious jelly beans. He's still as ambitious as ever. He likes to attend events around town to make sure people know that even though he's less than corporal, he's still an important part of this town. He met Helen at a psychic convention and the two quickly became very good friends. When Samuel learned Helen didn't have a place to stay, he offered her a room. A little to the dismay of Olivia. Olivia's his wife and Helen is a natural born psychic. She loves gold lives with a bunch of them in Moonlight Falls, but they're not related, they just live together. So Samuel is married to Olivia, Olivia Goth, also from The Sims 3 Supernatural, and her bio states that, even with the difference in their ages and social standing, Olivia knew Samuel was perfect for her from the instant they met. It was easy to ignore the taunts that she only married Samuel for his Goth family fortune. That was only one of the reasons, thank you. <laughs> Olivia didn't even mind that Samuel's niece accompanied them to their new home in Moonlight Falls. Life became much harder when Olivia lost Samuel or rogue magic jelly bean. After all, what kind of relationship could she off with a ghost. In her despondence, she accidentally shot it out. Oh my god, it was like shot. She shot it out. She shot it out the stereo and became a ghost herself. Olivia has since stayed away from most electronics and doesn't really like all the new gadgets Helen keeps bringing in the house. So they have the niece staying with them, Frida Goth. Frida Goth is actually like direct lineage from the Bella Goth, Mark McGoth family. So Frida has never been interested in love for commitment. So when her family suggested marriage to a land grab to tie the influential families together, she decided relocation was in order. While she hated the falling out with her brother Gunther, coming at moonlight falls with her uncle Samuel and his new bride Olivia seemed like the perfect fresh start. Things seemed great until Uncle Samuel's love for magic jelly beans caused his early demise. Olivia's heartbreak led to distraction, which in turn led to an electronic accident and fire, resulting in not just one ghost in the house, but three. Frida has adapted well though, and being a ghost suits her just fine. So if you don't know, just for context, the Goths and the land grabs have a very, very old feud. The Goths originally founded parts of town, but the land grabs originally built those parts of town up. So there is contention between who actually owns it, whether it's the people who had it first or the people who built it up. So who is Frida? I've said that she is a link to Mortimer and everybody and Frida is actually the daughter of Victor and Gretel Goth. It's actually Victor and Gretel Goth that start the legacy that we know today as the Goth family. Victor is Samuel's brother but unfortunately throughout all of the Sims games, every version of the game so far, Victor is always dead. <laughs> 
sorry to this man. <laughs> and Victor is also very, very much the goth man. He has a uh, fortune aspiration. He wants to be the CEO of a mega corporation. He's a workaholic. And his wife, Gretel, is ambitious, over emotional, a coward, and flirty. Bitch me too. The fuck. But this also contradicts with the husband's traits. They don't really seem like a good match because Victor is not flirty at all. So it seems like there is a little bit of trouble in paradise there, which is actually a theme through quite a lot of goth marriages that husband and wife don't really seem to match that well. But Greta's lifetime aspiration is to live in the lap of luxury and she has pretty much managed it. Wish it was me. <laughs> I'm being single, ready to mingle with any goth man. And then together Victor and Greta had two kids, Frida, who we've already covered so far, and Gunther. So Frida is a grumpy loner with commitment issues and she's also perfectionist. And given those traits, it does seem to be quite a stark contrast with what we know of goth family so far. And she doesn't really fit in with her immediate family that much. And being a ghost and living this life, the ghost life in Moonlight Falls actually does seem to suit her better. So even though, you know, she has fallen out with the family over it, her life is better suited to her. She didn't go on to marry or have kids. And unfortunately, once again, she is actually dead throughout this entire ordeal. <laughs> and then her brother Gunther Goth fits into the goth family lifestyle much more, better than Frida ever could. He's brave, charismatic, grumpy, frugal, and a workaholic. And his lifetime aspiration is to be a renaissance sim. And his bio states that you can tell just by looking at him that Gunther Goth comes from old money. You can like for now. But he doesn't seem arrogant or greedy, just comfortable with the fact that he's been rich all his life. To be fair, I don't think it'd take much to be comfortable with that. Being rich all your life is literally the definition of comfort, is it not? Yeah, he has quite a steampunk look when he's young, which deviates quite a lot from the older goth men. But as he gets older, he does, you know, suit and boot and everything. But the older goth men tend to have very strict, like we are in a suit you are a goth and then he ends up marrying cornelia goth and her bio states that she's gunther's perfect counterpart impeccably mannered and refined but not snooty i beg to disagree um because she actually does go on to hold like of the the snootiest of tea parties later in her life she's again charismatic and grumpy but she's also a neat perfectionist who does not flirt as well she wants to own the perfect garden and to that i say follow your dreams babe but unfortunately the issue with cornelia is that is a dream yet she hasn't got a single gardening skill so and also so marrying in the goth family is iconic enough like that is something to be proud of in and of itself but Cornelia has an amazing lineage all on her own her sister is the one the only Agnes Crumplebottom and they have a really good relationship together as well so we have a real amalgamation of iconic characters in this family Gunther and Cornelia live in Old Town which is a town outside of Sim City and they go out and have their own child who we all know as Mortimer Goth I used to love him now I'm not sure and then when Mortimer is young Gunther moves the family at Sunset Valley and this is where Mortimer actually grows up so the family home in Sunset Valley also has a cemetery where Victor and Gretel are buried because the shock horror of the dead as well as Cornelia's parents Simon and Prudence Crumplebottom these all died of old age so good for them at least it wasn't horrific you know what I mean <laughs> Lolita Goth is also buried here which also throws another spanner in our works entirely because she is obviously a member of the Goth family she's important enough to be buried in the Goth family graveyard but her links to the Goth family are just not known we have no information on it she has no previous mention in any of the previous sims games she is quite a mystery and whereas the rest of the family in the graveyard died of old age she died of electrocution so there's something quite suspicious going on here <laughs> to be honest she's a bookworm charismatic and childish but she's also a great kisser and a hopeless romantic the latter traits really don't match up with what we know of the goth family so far the goth family are very unflirty they do not do romance they sound more appealing by the sentence to me honestly <sighs> Oh, what's it got to take for me to get married to a fictional character? Is it legal? But yeah, she definitely has some trait to the goth family, like with the bookworm being charismatic, but she's a bit of a mystery and we don't really get any knowledge about her. So it just kind of ends there. <laughs> she could have been born and died there for all we know. Back to the living, Mortimer, who is now a child at this point. He's an artistic, ambitious and grumpy sim. The grumpy trait is really strong in this family. And I suppose I'd be grumpy if I was a goth as well. But he loves classical music, the colour black. Excuse me while I pretend to be shocked. And French toast. And he's also best friends with Bella Bachelor at this point. The Bachelors are also a very prominent family within the Sims franchise as well. But I do already have an entire video dedicated to Bella Goth, which goes through everything as well as the disappearance and theories. So I'll leave that in the description in case you want to go watch it. 
But Bella and Mortimer grow up and they actually end up getting married and they have the first child, Cassandra, and they live out Five Sim Lane, still living in Sim City. And Five Sim Lane is, you all know it, it's an iconically goth house that stands out from its environment. The rest of it is all like, oh, what a lovely suburban home. Goth. So, and at this point, Mortimer is just starting out in the scientist career as a test subject. So he's just really getting to grips with his life as an adult. And then sometime in between this, the couple have another child, Alexander and Gunther, Mortimer's dad, Alexander's granddad, actually becomes the founding father of Pleasant View. So the Pleasant View that we all know and love, Goths founded it, which is pretty iconic. And then from then, they all move to Pleasant View. So they leave The Sims 1 behind. We're now in The Sims 2 timeline, but just before Bella Goth disappears. But Mortimer is much more successful. He was a test subject when we'd last seen him, but now he's a full-on mad scientist. The family are very, very, very well off. And this shows not only in the amount of just cash they have lying around, but also in the house. The house is massively upscaled and they're really doing well in life. And then unfortunately, Gunther, fountain father of Pleasant View, God love him, and Cornelia, two emo babes of The Sims 3 Sunset Valley, unfortunately perish in a fire, actually. Quite an awful way to go. But yeah, they perish in a fire and they are buried in the Goth family graveyard in Pleasant View, as well as the other relatives. And then, you know, just all downhill from there, babe, genuinely. I mean, first your parents die and then your wife goes missing. It's actually looking a bit suspicious, Mortimer, babe. You're going to have to open up about that one. And I mean, you do because the police are knocking. But yeah, Bella gets ab abducted, which leaves Mortimer to raise Alexander, who was a child at that time. Cassandra is already an adult at this point and she is actually engaged to Don Lothario, a relationship which Mortimer does not agree with. And whether he doesn't agree with it because two are so unmatched personality-wise, although that is also a trend of the Goth family. Is it that or is it because Bella Goth goes missing? and Mortimer actually decides to get it on with a younger model and ends up going out with Dina Caliente who was new in town with her sister Nina. But things are even weirder from here. Dina, who Mortimer is now going out with, Dina was actually married to Bella's brother, Michael Batchelor. I told you that they were a very prominent family. And Michael Batchelor, he passed away. Oh, he is dead, rip. But while Michael Batchelor and Dina Caliente were married, Dina was actually having an affair with Don Lothario at the time for marriage. Her marriage was active. Michael wasn't even called yet and she's having an affair even though she's going out with Mortimer Goth at the minute she's also still in a relationship with Don so she's cheated on Michael Bachelor with Don she's cheated on Mortimer with Don and Don is also in a relationship with Cassandra which Dina's dead husband's niece it's also Dina's new lover's daughter it's also Dina's dead lover's sister's kid and also kind of Dina's niece as well it's very intertwined babe and uh, things that aren't technically illegal but feel illegal it actually makes me feel a little bit ill but thankfully sadly I don't know take your own meaning from it even though Cassandra and Don Lothario are engaged to be married if you do actually play through the wedding Don will leave Cassandra at the altar which is uh, sad she'll get over it it's better for her dodged a fucking bullet not nice to be left at the altar but like it's a relief <laughs> and Bella Goth's story doesn't end there she's actually found in Luna Lake she's got mentions there she also has a really strong presence in The Sims 2 PSP but like I said I do already have a video covering Bella Goth and I am also planning a Sims 2 PSP LP so yeah I'll leave the link for the other entire history of in the description. That is the entire history of the Goth family, my favourite family in The Sims 4, and I hold them very near and dear to my heart. I think they're a very flawed family, and I think at the heart of it, there's lots of things that are wrong with them, but I think that's why I like them so much. Also because the biggest emos in the franchise, because I mean, the land grabs are a deeply flawed family. I don't fucking like them. <laughs> But yeah, happy Halloween. I hope you all have an amazing Halloween. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video. If you have any other entire history of that you want me to do, leave a comment down below as well. It can be on an object. It can be on anything, um, a town, Sims. It can be an event, anything. Let me know and I will investigate. I love you all so, so much. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, beach.